This is just a bit of an update video on my charge controller recommendations video largely to reflect technological changes in the four years since I did that video as I'll basically summarize what was in it that's still accurate basically in the case of a simple system like this just photovoltaic array, charge controller, battery bank and uh, inverter and loads sometimes one or the other of the inverter or the loads aren't necessary depending on the type of the system um, whether or not this particular system would make more sense with a with a maximum pop point charge controller or a pulse width modulation charge controller or a shent type charge controller is dictated largely by the design constraints and requirements of the system. In case of just a really simple thing, you know, a few tens of watts to low hundreds of watts modules, battery bank, couple lights, especially something in the say hundred watts and under photovoltaic module size. Uh, small 12 volt system running just a couple lights for something like a shed um, maximum power point charge controllers generally aren't financially justified in that type of situation be just a simple pulse width modulation or shunt type charge controller conversely in the case of something like a <coughs> portable system where something like man portability or roof space or something dictates that you need to get as much electricity out of a given size photovoltaic array as is possible, so adding more modules simply isn't an option. Maximum power point would make the most sense. Another place for maximum power point charge controllers would make the most sense, provided the input potential window range is big enough, is for things where the suitable location or the closest suitable location for the photovoltaic array to the point of load is a long distance away from it. The cost of a maximum power point charge controller and thin wires because on up because the photovoltaic array is operating at relatively high potentials for such a system in the you know low hundred volts range or high tens of volts range um, operating at those kinds of potentials means you can have um, home run currents on the order of a few amperes at most unless you can use thin cheap wires so you're looking at not factoring in things like conduit um, um, so just for the wire alone, you're looking at, for say, a 500-foot run on the order of about $100, assuming you're using, like, 12-gauge wire, whereas if this were a fairly respectable, say, like, one kilowatt array or thereabouts, um, for a 12-volt system or even a 24-volt system, you'd be looking at 4-gauge for this home run cable at a minimum, and there you're looking at $1,000 and up. Probably closer to two grand if you had to go into... Zero or two zero three zero four zero type cable, which is expensive, and also running that in conduit um, would be a bit of a pain. Even if it is direct burial suitable, then putting it into the conduit at each end for the home, for the array terminations at the combiner box, and for the charge controller, be an absolute pain for running into the disconnect switch and all that right. Whereas 12 gauge, oh, it's nothing. Especially considering this is going to be a conduit when it probably be uh, stranded wiring and that's, relatively speaking, easier to work with. And another application where uh, high potential photovoltaic arrays and home runs combined with the maximum power point charge control would make sense, just a bit of a filler for that is where there is a certain amount of area around the house or point of load that gets good sun and that is wanted for things like solar thermal for whatever reason be it hot water or hot air or whatever and because it's a lot easier to run electricity than it is plumbing or ducting <laughs> it's a lot easier to run wires than it is plumbing or, or ducting the solar collector can be mounted right next to the point of load and wires can be run to any suitable location where the photovoltaic array can be located.